person, he understands and we can have the confidence that this same Jesus is coming back for you and I one day. So I'm thank you for joining us tonight. If you would, real quickly, uh, uh, before we get into our Bible study, if you'll go down and hit the share button, hit the share button. Let's share uh, the video tonight as much as possible. Get as many people online and uh, so you can enjoy what the Lord has given me. I hope it's going to be a blessing to you tonight. Again, we're sorry we're having to do it this way, but with the situations the way they are, the crisis that our country is in, this is the best way to keep you safe out of harm's way, keep us safe out of harm's way, but also so at the same time, still be able to enjoy the goodness from the Word of God. So what are we doing in this time? Well, I hope you're staying at home as much as possible. I hope you're keeping your social distances away and trying to avoid any kind of way of contacting this coronavirus that's going around and everything else. But uh, as you're doing what I'm doing and as we're all gathering and watching the news and, and seeing the, what our governors are saying and what the president is saying, and, and you know, this thing ain't over yet. This thing ain't over yet. I don't, And uh, we don't know when it's going to be over. Uh, we don't know that this time tomorrow uh, that the state of South Carolina is in a lockdown. I will tell you, if you hadn't already heard, that Mecklenburg County, the, the county that our church resides in, is in lockdown right now. So uh, uh, things, things can turn and go either way. So, But for you and I as Christians, let's forget about all that for a little while and, and you know what you're experiencing, what I'm experiencing, and what we're going through, and no doubt we want to keep the faith. And, and, uh, and I'll be honest with you, there, there has been, uh, you know, an unusual peace, an unusual peace. I'm watching the news, and, and you know, and I'm looking at what's going on, and I understand things can get a whole lot worse. But at the end of the day, when I open up the pages of God's Word, I have the assurance that you know what? This is the worst it's ever going to get for a child of God. And uh, when you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, you can look at the Word of God and understand it, that you're not the only one, I'm not the only one, we're not the only church uh, that is going through what we're going through right now. But we can't take the account of some men in the Word of God, look at their lives, look at what they experienced, look at what God did for them and how He did it, and learn some things that will help carry us through what we're going through. So grab your Bibles there if you're sitting in your recliner on your couch or, or however you're doing it. If you can, I want you to grab your Bibles and be turned to the book of Job. We're going to go look at a man tonight that everybody's familiar with. And uh, We're going to Job chapter number 23. Job 23 is where we're going to be at tonight. In a few minutes, we're going to read the whole chapter together. But you know, we always go to Job and, and we talk about the, uh, the man, the integrity that he had, the character that he had, the faith that he had, the walk that he had with God and, and everything else, which and we also know that in the first chapter, uh, Job loses it all. Job loses it all. I mean, one day he's on the mountaintop enjoying everything and the goodness of life, and the next moment, just like that, everything is taken away, which kind of reminded me just a few weeks ago, man we're enjoying life we're going to church man we're enjoying the company of one another I mean we're experiencing everything that is good and just like that <clears throat> just like that things change so we're going to look at Job in chapter number 23 read with me along in the word of God for me the Bible says uh, then Job answered <clears throat> and said even today is my complaint bitter my stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, exclamation mark, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? And Job says, no, no. Let me stop right there and say this. God is not against you. God is for you. Regardless of what you're going through and the stress levels that you and your family are in or what you may even face in the crisis on down the road, remember one thing. If you don't get nothing else tonight, you remember this, child of God. If you belong to him, God is for you. He is not against you, but he would put strength in me. Verse number seven. There the righteous, the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. 
He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is in one mind. And who can turn him? And what his, what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me, because I was not cut off. Neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. Let's pray together tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to break open the bread of life this evening, be able to share from the Word of God. Now, God, my prayer is this, that you would allow me to bring it across in the way you deliver it to my soul, that it may be a help to every man, woman, boy, and girl that listens to us tonight online, God. Have your way tonight. Encourage the saint of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. The way I read my Bible, that you can't get much better of a man of God than the man Job. I mean, just look what God says back over there in chapter number one, where he just says the words like this, Has thou considered my servant Job? I ain't read nowhere else in the pages of God's word or heard God ever say that again. Has thou considered my servant Job? So Job had an outstanding walk with the Lord. Job had an outstanding fellowship with God. I believe Job was very faithful. I mean, I believe Job, he loved his wife. He loved his children. I believe Job was faithful in his finances, how he carried himself and conducted himself because we see that he was a man who never wanted anything. I believe that Job was a man that every day he got up, he got up with the intentions to walk with the Lord, to please the Lord. And I believe he lived every day that way. But what we find out about Job and in his life, and even, I want you to look at verse number 17. It says, because I was not cut off before the darkness, neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. Understand something, child of God, because I know a lot of children of God, especially young Christians, they're struggling with with their faith right now because they're not understanding. You know, I've got saved. I'm going to church. You know, I'm studying my Sunday school lesson. I'm taking my kids to church. I'm even paying my time. I'm doing all these things. So why is this happening to me? Well, that's a very good question. Understand something, child of God. Because you are faithful and because you do do the things that God commands you to do and you're doing your dead level best to follow the Lord, that does not exempt you from dark times in your life look at verse 17 because I was not cut off before the darkness neither hath he covered the darkness from my face tonight that's what I want to deal with the dark times the dark times. That's where we're all at right now. None of us that's listening now, not myself understand or even know what tomorrow holds now, we say that cliche along, uh, all the time. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we're trusting the one that holds tomorrow. But when life and the uncertainties of life come at us the way they come at that puts a new perspective on that saying. That puts a new meaning on that saying. And let's just be honest. You listen to, uh, uh, to the President Trump. You listen to Governor Cooper of North Carolina. You listen to Governor McMaster of South Carolina. You hear the health officials. You can't help but run through your mind the what if this takes place. What if? If the truckers hey, get stopped and they cannot get the groceries to the grocery store? What if we're never able to assemble again at the house of God? What if I do lose my job? What if I do lose my salary? What's going to happen? Why is this happening to me? God, I've been faithful. God, I've did this. God, I've done that. Stop right now. Go ahead and mark her down and understand just because you're a child of God does not exempt you from dark times. It does not exempt you from desolate places. It does not exempt you 
hey, from dry spiritual valleys that you may walk through sometime. It is a part of the Christian life. It's a part of the Christian life. Why? Because every one of us is still living in a body of flesh. We're still in a body of flesh. And the Bible tells us that He is conforming us into the image of His Son, which means in this robe of flesh in which I stand, there's a lot of things that does not resemble God Almighty in heaven. It does not resemble, amen, the Son, the sitting at the right hand of the Father. Why? Because we spend more time, hey, praying, praying about all the what ifs and praying about the darkness instead of taking it the way Job took it, instead of taking the way Christ took it when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he knew what was about to transpire. And you know what he said? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. As a child of God in the hour in which we're living right now, it's not that we put our focus on the darkness. It's not that we put our focus, amen, on what's happening in our country or even on the virus that is surrounding us and all going through our country. But what we need to put our focus on as a child of God is what in this is God trying to teach me? What in this is God trying to show me? What in this is God trying to eliminate from my life to be able to conform me into the image of His Son? I understand it is very hard to think that way. That's why it's important while you're home right now, while you're locked up right now in your home, that you don't spend all your time in front of the television. You don't spend all your time trying to figure everything out, but that you take some time, open up the Word of God and get you some strength, get you some understanding, get you some peace of mind, because if not, the darkness in which we're all treading through right now will drive you crazy. Will drive you crazy. Too many of God's people. Listen, we had the promises of God. The promises of God. That means we don't have to worry. And I've told you every time we've come online, there's a difference between worry and concern. Am I worried? I'm not worried. Am I concerned? Yes. Why? Because I'm running out of Mountain Dews. we got to go buy some more. You see, there's a difference. So as a child of God in this dark time, preacher, I want you to give me some things from the Word of God that I can do or maybe help me understand and glean some things from the Word of God that's going to help me make it through the next two days, the next two weeks, the next two months. Friend, we have no idea what's going to happen. Now, I understand they're saying maybe... Easter we can come back together. We don't know. The next time the church assembles together may be in the sky on the way out of here. But for this hour, for this time, you've got to have something that's going to sustain you. And I tell you what is not going to sustain you. The news media is not going to sustain you. Hey, griping and complaining is not going to sustain you. Hey, giving up is not going to sustain you. Hey, worrying all the time is not going to sustain you. But what will sustain you will be the authority that comes from the word of God when you can open it up at your house and you can read it for yourself and when the spirit of God on the inside connects with the spirit of God of that book and you know that you know that hey my God's grace is sufficient that's what's going to help sustain you to know that no troubled trial is going to wash away the blood of Jesus Christ look with me in verse number 10 of chapter number 23 Verse number 10, we won't be long tonight, we won't be long. I want you to look at this, just three things real quickly, three things real quickly. These scriptures here about Job uh, not being able to find the Lord in verse number 8, he says, I go forward, but he is not there. I go backward, I cannot perceive him on the left hand where he doth work, I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, I cannot see him. You know, and this scripture's been running over in my mind ever since Sunday afternoon. And and you know, I got in my Bible and I had some things written in the fly leaf of my Bible, some notes. I don't know where I got it from. I don't know if I heard it from another message, hey, from another preacher. All I know, it was written in the fly leaf of my Bible beside these scriptures right here. And when I read those notes and read this scripture, it connected. It helped me. And tonight, I want to help you. So what is Pastor Tim Bloom going to do in these next few hours, these next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months? What are you going to do at the house? Well, you know what? Some people's contemplating doing this, doing that, changing this, changing that. 
but you better get your answer from the Word of God. Listen, I want to remind you of something. This is very important. If you don't get nothing else I say tonight, child of God, you get this right here in verse number 10 where Job just got through saying it, 7, 8, 9. He can't find the Lord nowhere. It's dark, friend. It's dark. But in verse number 10, he says, but he knoweth the way that I take. But he knoweth the way that I take. There Job is. Job's lost everything. Job curses the day that he was even born. He curses the day he was even conceived in his mother womb. Job's got to a point in his life he wished he could just go ahead and go to the grave. He, no, he's lost everything. His finances. He's lost his family. Everything, my friend. He's lost his health. He's living in a place of darkness. And on top of all of that, he cannot find his God. But look what the Bible says. But he knoweth the way that I take. Child of God, you may not be feeling the Lord right now. You may not be understanding the Lord right now. You may be looking on your left, looking on your right, and you can't find him nowhere. But one thing you can take into account and be assured of right now is the book says, he knoweth the way that I take. Otherwise known as his eyes are always on you. Though you can't see him, he can always see you. Though you can't feel him, and though you don't understand, the Bible says, but he knoweth the way that I take. Understand something, child of God. God's eyes is always on the sparrow. It is always on his child. You can take comfort tonight. You don't understand what's happening in America. You don't understand what's happening. This global effect that is happening. I don't understand it either. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to face after the sun sets tonight. But one thing I know is there is a man sitting in the throne room of heaven. God Almighty Himself. And at the right hand of the Father is His Son. He knoweth the way that I take. It may be dark all around, but God knows where you are. God knows where you are. Listen, His eyes are never off of you. But He knoweth the way that I take. All right, preacher? That's real good. I know now that God sees everything. God's watching me. Now, what's my next step? I'm glad you asked. Look at verse number 11. Look at verse number 11. My foot hath held his steps. His way hath I kept and not declined. Number one, his eyes are never off of you. Number two, child of God, listen to me real close. Real close. This is not a time to forsake him or his way. Look what the Bible says in verse number 11, what Job did. Job said, I can't find the Lord nowhere. Seven, eight, nine, I can't find him nowhere. I don't know where he's at. Oh, where's he being? Where, where's he at? I, can't, I, I know he's over there working, but where's he at? But Job said in verse number 11, my foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept. His way have I kept. No doubt, no doubt, there are some Christians tonight, whether in our congregation or just in the church in general, especially some Christians who maybe they're new converts or maybe they ain't that, they're not that strong in their faith now, or maybe there's some Christians whose walk wasn't all that great, their fellowship wasn't all quite like it ought to be with the Lord. In other words, they was, you know, had one foot in, one foot out, and you know, and when this storm hit, it really rocked their faith. And I'll be honest with you, it's a whole lot easier to give up than to stay in the fight. It's a whole lot easier to walk out than to stay and face it. What do we do? We pattern ourselves after a man who had it all, who had it all and the favor of God, but lost it all, suffered tremendously, buried his family, no finances, nothing. One minute, he's got it all. And the next minute, it's stripped down. In the average child of God, that's when they'd walk away and quit. They'd walk away and quit. Right now, the average Christian is fussing. I've seen it on social media, same thing you've seen on social media. People on there, uh, a few weeks ago, they're praising God, and now they're cussing God. This, that, and going back and forth, all because their life got messed up. It's amazing how 
This epidemic that we're going through is really showing the true colors of the children of God, what they're really made of. But listen, we can't put all of our focus on all that stuff. You've got to know where you stand at with the Lord. You've got to be the one that's going to stay in the fight. You've got to be the one that's going to walk the way Job walked. Look what he said in verse number 11. His way have I kept. Can I encourage you, child of God, right there in your home where you see it, riding down the road, watching it and listen to it. Hey, on your telephone, however you're doing it. Hey, I understand what you're facing, but what you cannot do is you cannot forsake the way of the Lord. This ain't a time to give up. This ain't a time to get relaxed. This ain't a time to push it to the side. If there's ever been a time in your life that you got to know that you know, number one, you're born again, but number two, you need to know that you're in the will of God. Is in this hour right here. And look what Job said. He his way have I kept and not declined. Child of God, listen to your pastor. This ain't a time we back up. This is a time that we stand up. This ain't a time, hey, my friend, to run away. This is a time to enter our war room prayer club and pray like we've never prayed before. This is the time that all the talk that we've done in the past, that we rise up to the occasion and be the church that God's called us to be, fulfill the commission that God's called us to be. We can and not forsake the ways of the Lord. You've got to stay faithful and true. Why? Because His eyes is always on you. You're never alone. You're not in this thing by yourself. And if ever there been a time, don't forsake His ways. Don't forsake God. Don't forsake God. Don't forsake the ways that the Lord has laid out in the Word of God. We know. We know what we need to be doing. We understand, child of God. Why? Listen, listen. Because we have the Spirit of God on the inside. And when you have the Spirit of God on the inside, He can give you direction right here. Sometimes, yes, it takes prayer. Some things come but by prayer and fasting. Sometimes it takes prayer and fasting and travailing with the Spirit of God to find out what God would have you to do. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of effort and energy on your end to find out how He wants you to execute your life, my friend. But whatever you do, though the times are trying, though the times are hard, you do not forsake His way. Don't forsake His way. Number one, his eyes is never off of you. Number two, don't forsake his way. Number three, number three, look at verses 13 and 14. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me and many such things are with him. Let me ask you something. This whole epidemic took you by surprise. This whole rearrangement, you mamas listen to me, this whole rearrangement of being at home with your children and some of you homeschooling has never done it before. Some of y'all having to rearrange your finances. Some of you is having to scavenge this and scavenge that. Some of you, your stress level is going up because of all of this other kind of stuff. This thing has rocked your world. But you know what? It ain't rocked his. Do you not know? Can you understand? God knew before the corona ever came along, God knew what we was going to face. If you, if you back up back to the first Wednesday night, January 1, 2020, when I was preaching here, I stood up here and I preached a message that in 2020 broke down what the numbers mean, that in 2020, God was going to test us. God was going to try us. He was going to hold us at a higher responsibility. We was got to be more obedient than we've ever been before because we're going to be tried and tested. And ever since that night, things has been rocking pretty hard, pretty hard. Never in my life did I think we'd be facing this, but never. Nevertheless, here we are. But listen, those standing here January 1, 2020, I had no idea on March the 25th I'd be standing here preaching to an empty sanctuary, talking to you by way of live stream, Facebook Live. I had no idea I was going to be going through that. But do you know who did? Do you know that when I was standing here January 1, God already knew what was going to happen on March the 25th? What are you trying to say, preacher? That in this hour in which we live, do not fight his 
his will. Number three tonight, do not fight his will for your life. You understand what I'm saying? Look what Job says. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. Let me remind you, Greater Life Baptist Church, let me remind you, Sunday school teachers, let me remind you, mamas, your daddies, your grandmas, your grandpa, the church family, God has a will for your life. And where you sit at right now, evidently that's where God has brought you to. But you can have the assurance that, hey, if God brought me to it, you know the old saying, God has carried me through it. But you know what? The only way God can carry you through it is that you do not forsake His will. You don't want to bail out and go this way. You don't want to go that way. You have got to stay in this thing and do not fight the will of God. Is it the will of God for me to lose my job? I can't answer that. But if you lose it, take into consideration, maybe God's got something bigger and better. I don't know. I can't explain those things. I won't even attempt to explain those things. But I can explain this. God has a real and purpose for every individual born again child of God. It is you to do your due diligence to get in the book. Stay on your knees. Remember, His eyes is on you and don't fight his will don't forsake his way and stay in it and God is faithful and true he's got something for you but child of God in this hour in this hour do you know and understand we live in the most selfish country in the world though it's the greatest country in the world do you know that Americans is all about themselves what about this? What, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? What about this? What about Do you know that it took an epidemic like this to remove some skills back from people's eyes for them to understand that life ain't all about you? The life of the God of the book that you're reading and holding in your lap, Jesus Christ has always been about others. About others. And during this epidemic, did God cause it? I can't answer that. Well, actually, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. It's just because of sin. See it. You want to get mad at somebody, get mad at Adam. But you know what God can do? God can take a terrible situation and bring something good out of it. Because my Bible tells me, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Called according to How is this ever going to work out to be good? Well, the only way you can find that out is to take the points that I just give you tonight and apply them to your life. Remember, number one, his eyes is always on you. Number two, don't forsake his way. Number three, don't fight his will. And you know what? If you do your dead level best to stay in the center of God's will, do what God's called you to do without the complaining and the murmuring and everything else. Just take it that where you're at, this is what God has for you right now. And if God's got you here, he will carry you through. Why, my friend? Because you can flip over a couple chapters back in chapter number 19, and you can find out that, uh, that Job said something very, 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 very awesome. And, you know, it encourages my heart when he said this, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. You see what he's saying? Hey, this is the oldest book in the Bible. And he says, I know my Redeemer liveth. And I know that at the end of this thing, when it's all over, said and done, somebody's going to step out. And you know who that is? is that's your redeemer but he didn't stop there and he says and though after my skin worms destroyed this body yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another though my reins be consumed within me do you know what Job just told you he just gave you all the hope you need he just gave you all the wisdom that you need to know that hey you will survive the epidemic corona, COVID-19 virus that's plaguing our world. You will make it through it. Why? Because you have a Redeemer that is doing just fine. He's alive. Sit at the right hand of the Father in your comfort. It's not in the stimulus package that the government just passed, but your comfort and hope is in this blessed old book. And when the blessed old book begins to speak to you... It Spirit of God begins leaping in your soul. You can know that you know that you know that your Redeemer liveth. Everything's going to be all right. So as a child of God, I'm going to stay with the will of God. And if I don't know what the will of God is, maybe this is why God's got me quarantined. Maybe this is why God has got me sitting at the house. Why? Because there's a lot of Christians who don't know the will of God. There's a lot of Christians that sit on the pews of do nothing. They ain't doing nothing for God. This is the time you take the 
opportunity. Search the pages of God's Word. Get into your prayer closet and find out when the gates are opened back up in the city. Hey, it's released. It comes back alive. What can I do for the glory of God? Find the will of God for your life. Find the will of God for your life during this time. Don't just waste this opportunity that you have. All of you at home is always talking about having family time. God's giving you all the family time that you need. But during this family time, find the will of God for your family. Find the will of God for your family. But this ain't the time to forsake the ways of God. Stay faithful. Why? Because you can. Why, preacher? How can I stay faithful? Because you have the assurance that you're not alone. His eyes are always on you. God, the Bible says this, if God be for us, who can be against us? Take that to heart. If there's ever been a time you need to memorize that verse, do it now. If God be for you. So let me ask you this question tonight in closing. Is God for you? You belong to him? Are you God's? Your life. I, 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 don't answer that question with what you're doing with life. Because you see, there's a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. That don't mean they belong to God. Do you really, are you really truly born again? This is an hour that is most critical to know that you're a child of God. To know that you're blood bought and blood washed. Are you truly his? If you are, then you have the assurance his eyes is on you. He knows right what, where you are and what you're going through right now. I don't know about you, child of God. And I'm fixing to walk out that side door and I'm going back to Kershaw. And you know what? I can go home. I can lay my head on the pillow tonight with the assurance of this. You know what? God's got this. God's got it. And tomorrow, whatever I face, you know what I'll do? I'll face it with no evidence. This is where God wants me at. Listen. Don't forsake the ways. Don't fight his will. Let God do what he wants to do in your life and through your life. And hold true to the pages of God's word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight. God, I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for that man named Job. God, I didn't read it, but you can turn over to the last chapter of the book. And we find out that, Lord, you gave him back everything and more. So it pays to stay faithful. It pays to stay true. It, stay, it pays to not fight your will, Lord, to go wherever thou leadest us, God. So, Lord, as we tread these open waters that men have not treaded before, Lord, we'll let you navigate. We'll follow the compass of the pages of God's word. Lord, we'll do our dead level best to stay faithful and true. Help our loved ones at home tonight, God. Lord, we want to lift up Brother Roger, who's in the hospital, Lord, and he's got a lot of issues going on with his lungs, and, and you go, we praise your name that he tested negative uh, for the coronavirus. That was a blessing, Lord, but he's got some other issues going on, so I, I want to lift him up tonight, God, and Lord, uh, you just touch his body, heal him, and God, I know it's hard to be there alone, Lord, but uh, you just uh, manifest your presence in that room right now, God. We want to lift up Monty to you. God, Lord, he's home recovering from his surgery. Ask you, God, Lord, to be with him, and there's many others, God, uh, that's fighting these allergies God and Lord to our knowledge nobody in our church is, uh, has been affected by the virus yet we want to keep it that way Lord so I pray to God Lord for all those around our nation that has been affected God you touch them you help them those families who's lost loved ones God I pray Lord the grace of God upon them Lord I lift up our leaders to you God all of them Lord from the federal level to the state level to the local level God I lift them up Lord asking you God if you would uh, to give them wisdom and knowledge and understand to make the right decisions Lord, I pray, Lord, for our church family. God, help us as we lead this flock through these trying times. God, Lord, may they continue to read the pages of the book of Job from chapter 1 all the way through and understand that, Lord, everybody goes through dark times. Everybody faces times they want to give up and throw in the towel. But nevertheless, your eyes are always on us, and we're not going to fight against you. And we'll stay in your will, God. Why? Because we know our Redeemer liveth. In the name of Jesus. Don't you sign off yet? 
don't sign off yet, we want to make a couple announcements. Uh, please remember, uh, you can go online to the wet church website and give by way of your tithe and your offering. Uh, remember this now, because we're not congregating together, you know, we still have commands of the Word of God. Uh, the ministry is still going on to the best that we can, and uh, so you still be faithful. Remember I said, stay in the will of God. And uh, you can go online and give. Uh, you, can, uh, you can mail it into the church, to the church address, or you can give us a call, me, uh, uh, you can call a uh, Pastor uh, Tyler will be glad to come by the house and pick it up and make sure uh, that it's in the right place. Uh, we made uh, we picked up some yesterday. We had some delivered to the church today, and uh, so uh, we're doing our part to handle that correctly. Uh, so don't forget about that. Don't forget about that. Uh, I know everybody's taking a financial hit, but listen, if we want God to take care of us, we got to continue to do our part. What God commands us. Remember this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, we're taking it uh, uh, one week at a time. One week at a time. This this coming Sunday, we will have one service only. At the 11 o'clock hour, we'll go live again. One service only this coming Sunday at the 11 o'clock hour. We'll have some singing. We'll have some preaching again. And uh, we'll enjoy the goodness of the Lord and worship Him on the Lord's Day. That will be the only thing going on this coming Sunday. Uh, nobody will be gathering here at the campus. Everything will be online. Online. And next Wednesday, next week, Sunday 11 o'clock, and next Wednesday, we'll be back online at 6.30. That's as far as we're announcing right now because we don't know what's going to behold. So we don't want to jump ahead. We just want to take care of where we're at right now. That's what the Lord has given us liberty as of right now. This coming Sunday, 11 o'clock, and then Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, all the children's ministry, Miss Kristen and them, they're getting videos together. And uh, I'm sure they'll be posting them for the Wanas. I'm sure they'll be posting them for kids' ministry. Uh, we want to keep that going. We don't want to go slack on that. And also, uh, Pastor Jay has got uh, uh, things ready for our team ministry. He'll be posting his stuff uh, on Thursday, tomorrow. He wasn't going to do it tonight to interfere with what we're doing. So he'll be posting on Thursday at 5 o'clock. Be looking forward at 5 o'clock tomorrow, all you tees. I want to give a shout out uh, to uh, my uh, uh, Raymar. Raymar, if you listed, I want to tell you, hey, I love you. Thank you for the note you slid in that bag yesterday. It was an encouragement to me. And I want to tell you, thank you for that. And uh, all of our teenagers, uh, uh, look around you if you see a need. Uh, check in on the early. We're doing our part on that. But reach out the church members check on one another and if a need arises uh, then please uh, let us know uh, we've given out a, a little bit of food through the crisis uh, we have not called in the crisis team because we ain't had many phone calls so until that becomes a, an abundance that's when we'll call in everybody uh, so you crisis team just stay uh, stay ready to go and uh, until you hear from us just keep praying just keep praying and uh, until we see you on Sunday morning do your very best listen to me I want to say this and then we're going to sign off Listen, whether you believe it's a hoax or not, whether you think it's serious or not, listen to the man that God has spiritually put authority over you called your pastor. If you don't have to go out, stay at home. If you don't have to work in the public, stay at home. Do what our authorities over us is asking us to do. Do we like it? Do we agree with it? That's not the question. The Bible has commanded us to obey those who have the rule over us. Right now, they're not going against the Word of God. It's not even up for discussion. That's not even no debate. They're not going against the Word of God. They're doing it to try to keep us out of harm's way. Do your part. Be smart. If you're having symptoms, listen, if you're having symptoms, please let us know or, or, or somebody know and uh, take care of your family. Be washing your hands, as all of them are saying. Don't be touching your face, all those kind of things. And listen, very soon, this is going to be over and we'll be back at it, Lord willing. But until then, friend, you do your part to help our country be opened back up. As long as the people keep going around doing all the things that they're doing, it's not going to stop until we rise up. The church can play his part in obedience to those that have authority over us. Stay home. Be smart. And we'll see you on Sunday. While walking down memory lane, not so long ago, Satan came right by my way, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray, 
And he wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. He said, you're undeserving, cause I know where you've been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell. So what makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy, remind. 